Welcome back to our YouTube channel. Today, we're diving into the world of electric vehicles. With so many options available, it's no surprise that many potential buyers are hesitant. From range anxiety to battery life concerns and the limited public charging infrastructure, there's plenty to consider. But what stands out the most is the quality of some EVs at launch, which has been less than ideal. We've seen recalls for fire risks and numerous complaints about software issues, just to name a few. So, join us as we take a closer look at some of the most prevalent problems affecting popular EVs and discuss the implications for quality in the EV market. Let's get started. Let's take a look at the Audi e-tron GT. Although it's generally a reliable EV, it does have a few hiccups. For instance, there's a technical service bulletin regarding the e-tron GT unexpectedly shifting to neutral when coming to a stop, certainly an unnerving experience. The culprit? Software glitches. And it's not just limited to the drive unit. Additional technical service bulletins address flickering street names on the heads-up display, non-functional telematics, and the presence of stored trouble codes without actual faults at delivery. These issues can be quite frustrating, making it surprising that the e-tron GT is still considered one of the better options in terms of initial challenges. The Chevrolet Bolt faced a significant scandal that, although rooted in a supplier issue, had the potential to severely impact the entire vehicle. The battery supplier, LG, made a mistake in the production of battery cells. Unlike a typical engine failure that leaves a car stranded on the side of the road, LG's battery issue posed a serious fire risk. Thankfully, no fatalities were reported, but fires did occur. Consequently, GM recalled all Bolt EVs and Bolt EUVs produced up to August 2021 and issued a stop sale order. Unable to sell new or used models, dealers faced restrictions, and owners were advised against parking their cars indoors. GM eventually promised to replace the battery packs in all affected vehicles, but production was halted for several months. Interestingly, the Bolt found itself in the spotlight once more due to fire-related issues. Late last year, Chevrolet recalled a majority of Bolts again, as seatbelt pretensioners posed a risk of igniting the carpet during crashes. It's ironic that the Bolt, named to evoke the image of lightning bolts known for causing wildfires, faced such fire-related problems. As a result, some airports and public spaces have gone as far as banning Chevy Bolts from their parking lots. Interestingly, the Chevrolet Bolt wasn't the only vehicle with fire-related issues. A Ford F-150 Lightning electric truck experienced a battery fire even before leaving Ford's possession. It's quite ironic that both vehicles, named after Lightning, would face such problems, a twist that could rival the plot lines of some sitcoms. On February 4, an F-150 Lightning caught fire in a Ford storage lot, making for an awkward situation. To add to the concern, Ford has an ongoing customer campaign addressing battery performance degradation in the F-150 Lightning, which isn't the best image for a recently launched flagship EV. It's important to note that the F-150 Lightning isn't the only Ford EV that has faced battery-related issues. In June 2022, Ford recalled 48,924 Mustang Mach-E electric crossovers and issued a stop sale order for in-stock units. This was due to battery contactors overheating when the vehicle was driven aggressively, as one might with a Mustang. A software update was provided as a solution, but it remains to be seen if this update has any negative impact on the vehicle's performance, as I have yet to test a post-recall Mach-E myself. Upon taking delivery of their new Hyundai Ioniq 5 and Kia EV6 electric crossovers, several owners found themselves facing a cold winter with no heat inside their expensive new cars. Browsing through online forums reveals numerous cabin heater issues, resulting in a rather uncomfortable winter driving experience. A technical service bulletin addressing these problems exists in Ireland, but it's not widely publicized. Another prevalent issue at launch was the lack of battery preconditioning, which is now being resolved through a software update. 
This deficiency can significantly impact DC fast charging speed, an embarrassing situation considering the eGMP platform's 800 volt architecture is a major selling point for these vehicles. Additionally, there was a recall involving the shifter control unit that disengaged the parking pole, causing the cars to roll away without any driver input. This issue reportedly resulted in four runaway vehicles in South Korea. It might be cliché to make jokes about British cars and electronics, but it appears Jaguar hasn't entirely escaped such issues. Back in 2019, Jaguar had to recall 3,083 I-PACE models from 2019 and 2022 due to potential failures in their regenerative braking systems. This doesn't sound like a pleasant situation, to say the least. With numerous technical service bulletins to their name, including one addressing the failure of the high-voltage coolant heater, the I-PACE may be a visually appealing choice, but it does come with some risks. Let's take a trip down memory lane to demonstrate that EV problems have been around for a while. Although the second-generation Nissan LEAF is a decent car, the original version faced significant battery degradation issues due to its cooling method. Unlike most other EVs that use liquid cooling, Nissan opted for air cooling in an effort to cut costs. Unfortunately, this approach proved to be less effective, relegating many early Leafs to the role of short distance, around town vehicles. Furthermore, a recall was issued for 2013 to 2015 Leafs due to brake relays freezing in cold temperatures, adding to the first generation Leafs challenges in the market. In 2022, Polestar issued a recall for 3,457 Polestar 2 electric vehicles from the 2021 and 2022 model years. The issue at hand involved the battery energy control module, which could reset while driving, resulting in a loss of power and leaving drivers unable to accelerate or maintain their speed. However, the Polestar 2's challenges don't stop there. The 2021 model has been subject to 93 technical service bulletins, addressing a range of components from non-functional keys to complications during high-voltage battery replacement. Rivian faced a different kind of issue, one related to the suspension components of its vehicles. In October, the company recalled 12,212 or 1T electric trucks, or 1S electric SUVs, and EDV electric vans due to the risk of hardware between the steering knuckles and upper control arms coming loose. Although only two vehicles were confirmed to have experienced this failure, the thought of your brand new, pricey pickup truck falling apart is undoubtedly distressing. Rivian's fix involved what they described as a properly torqued fastener. It sounds almost too easy to overlook, doesn't it? Furthermore, just last month, Rivian recalled 12,716 R1T trucks and R1S SUVs due to restraint system issues that could prevent the automatic locking retractor from functioning properly. In simpler terms, this issue could be quite painful. Imagine the embarrassment when your first major attempt at a global electric vehicle faces issues like wheels falling off. That's exactly what happened with these Toyota and Subaru twins, which encountered problems with lug bolts coming loose, even though Toyota is no stranger to such components. The fallout included a stop sale order, buyback offers, and a public relations disaster for both automakers. Since then, Toyota has issued several technical service bulletins addressing subpar charging performance, indicating that this crossover still has some hurdles to overcome. What more can be said about Tesla's quality issues that hasn't already been discussed? From the Model 3's production challenges to panel gap problems and even an investigation into steering wheels detaching while driving, Tesla has rightfully become the face of EV quality concerns. A mix of ambitious production goals and a tendency to address issues post-production has made purchasing a Tesla something of a gamble in the past. After all, when was the last time you heard of a new car's bumper cover falling off simply because it drove through a puddle? Volkswagen is currently facing a major software disaster, and unfortunately, even their newest electric vehicle, the ID4, isn't immune to the issues. Specifically, the infotainment software in the ID4 is slow, glitchy, and generally difficult to use. While this isn't unique to electric vehicles, it's still frustrating for customers who are expecting a smooth experience with a new EV. 
On top of that, there are EV-specific problems that some ID4 owners have reported experiencing. One major issue is with charging. Many customers have had trouble charging their vehicles at home, even with level 1 or level 2 charging. This is unacceptable, as charging at home should be a simple and painless process, just as it is with other plug-in electric cars on the market. So, what's the situation with EVs? Manufacturers are still figuring out how to perfect them, as they face unique challenges compared to ICE vehicles. Many quality issues are battery-related, but the arrival of solid-state batteries should resolve some problems. The simplification of EV drivetrains results in fewer but more significant failure points. New challenges also arise with DC fast charging, raising concerns about potential damage at public charging stations. In short, both new and established automakers are adapting to electric powertrains and the changes they bring. As we transition to an electric future, it's reasonable to expect some growing pains along the way. In conclusion, both EVs and ICE vehicles experience recalls and TSBs, with the pandemic adding extra challenges. Despite this, automakers remain committed to the EV future. Data and third-party studies suggest that EVs may have more problems than gas engine vehicles, but the industry continues to learn and adapt as it progresses. And that's a wrap, folks. We hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more content like this. Click the bell icon to stay updated. We'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments below. Thanks for joining us, and we'll see you in the next video.